The grim pendulum of public lunacy and outrage oscillates between Toronto and Ottawa, cities admired in scandal and folly. Canadians look up and wonder which city is more crazy, which collection of public actors brings them more misery and embarrassment, the Ford fiasco or the Duffster and his pals. Poor Toronto hasn't been this distressed since the great Second Cup whiteout. You recall the blizzard of 99, which saw the Canadian army come to the rescue of a slush-ridden, latte-impoverished metropolis. Well, how bad is it today? Try this. Rob Ford is now more famous, more identified with Toronto on 100 million screens than the CN Tower itself. He has compared the attacks on him as being like the invasion of Kuwait. Mr. Ford has entered the realm where a political disaster blasts into being as a pop phenomenon. Even George Bush has laughed at him on Jay Leno. He has, at Toronto's expense, become the municipal equivalent, not of Miley Cyrus twerking, but of a wrecking ball. Well, yesterday, the pendulum of shame and deceit swung back to the land of the Duffster, the Eden of egos and expenses of Wallen, Le Breton, Wright, Harb, Gerstein, and Brazil, the ceaseless unfolding of greed and the attempt to cover up its more hideous manifestations, where all wheels turn to shield the PM and, too late for some now, save the senators. Just as Mr. Ford is the rampaging bull in the china shop symbol of every political dysfunction in Toronto, Mike Duffy's histrionic I'm the victim here aria is the emblem for Ottawa, for grabbing whatever you can while you can, for dancing over, under, and between the rules, and exerting every untasked neuron for personal advantage or profile. One of the very small things that emerged yesterday, also to be credited to Mr. Duffy, comes in an email alleging that Nigel Reif was horrified and angered to learn not that Mr. Duffy was charging for flights or hotel expenses, things you might expect, but that he was expensing for, quote, meals in his own house. If you wanted to boil down to the core why people are so angry about Ottawa these days, you might look at that pretty item. It out Dingwall's Dingwall. It out Oda's orange juice Bev Oda. Expensing meals in your Ottawa house where you live. Did he charge for putting on his own socks, I wonder? You might compare these two, Mr. Ford and Duffy, to cyclones laying waste the political landscape. But that would be unfair to windstorms and landscape. The damage to politics, to the bonds between citizen and representatives, to the dignity which used to adhere to public office, to standards of taste and restraint is probably beyond calculation. The Ottawa affair has the potential to turn a government and break a prime minister. Toronto, well, it turns something too. That's best left unsaid. For The National, I'm Rex Murphy.